What's going on, everybody? I don't know if you know this, but that little scary sound that is in all kinds of things, I think it might have been used first as a spooky song in this movie. Welcome, everybody. We're doing Filmstruck Film Club. My name's Carson Higgins. It's my good buddy, Groot. This is my newest buddy, E.T. in disguise. Come on. Anyway, we're keeping up our October uh, scary movie picks, and we watched a classic universal horror movie. That's right. Maybe you've seen some of the other ones. They are quite famous. You got Frankenstein, Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, Invisible Man, Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Those are like the main famous ones, but there are others. There are a bunch more, actually. And in fact, the lead of Dracula, Bela Lugosi, and the lead of Fra uh, Frankenstein, our guy Boris Karloff, this was the first time that they teamed up. Uh, they wound up teaming up several times, I think like four or five or six times. One of those. Uh, but this was their first movie together, and I guess it was like quite a showdown, because they were the two biggest stars in horror films at this time. And uh, it, was, it was kind of a showdown for who, who was the big swinging dick back at Universal, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of cool that they not only got together for this movie, but that they had a good time working together and that they wanted to do it some more. We did watch, I'm gonna tell you what this movie was, uh, in case you aren't following us at Filmstroke Film Club and thus keeping up with these weekly picks, uh, the universal horror movie that we watched was none other than 1934's Edgar, oh wait, yep, Edgar G. Ulmer directed uh, The Black Cat, which you'll see on the poster, it says Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. Fun fact, this movie, the story that you see in this movie has pretty much absolutely nothing to do with the Edgar Allan Poe short story poem, The Black Cat. Uh, that poem is about somebody who like murders a cat and then is like haunted by the cat. And there is an element in this film where Bela Lugosi's character is like afraid of cats and even like kills one. But it's such a minor part of the story uh, that it's hard to actually use it as like a, it's based on. So the poster is kind of funny. It says, suggested by Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. Uh, this movie, uh, part of why I picked it is because it's 65 minutes long which is, for those who struggle with these things, an hour and five minutes. Uh, so it's a nice, short, little movie. Um, and it's got an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes. If you look on Letterboxd and you look at some of the reviews, a lot of the reviews are four, four and a half, five stars, and people saying, like, this is a forgotten classic of the Universal Horror movies and should be more loved, and it's pre-code, so it's got some things in it that probably would have otherwise had to have been cut out. Uh, so it's got a lot going for it. It also, fun fact, uh, it's one of the first films, first talkies, to have like a continuous score throughout almost the entire film. Uh, I don't remember all the composers. I think there's some Tchaikovsky in there. I know there's some Bach in there. It's just like classical music that was overlaid, but pretty much through like 90% of the movie, there is music playing, which had never really been done before, I guess, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, this, this one, it's just got some really weird stuff. Uh, I will say that, uh, because in England, a black cat is actually a sign of good luck, they changed the title for the British release to The Vanishing Body. Just, you could have that forever as little trivia knowledge. Uh, but yeah, we do follow Mr. and Mrs. Allison. They are traveling through Budapest. I don't remember if it's like a honeymoon or something. But they wind up in like a train mix-up, and so they're sharing a a train car with Bela Lugosi. I forget his character name. It's something Hungarian. But uh, they wind up kind of talking and he's kind of weird and long story short, they get on this bus, the bus crashes and they gotta go to Lugosi's homie's house, this like architect played by Boris Karloff, who has an incredible costume and hairdo in this movie, if I may add. Um, we do come to find out that Bela Lugosi's character was like in a prison camp for a long time, post-World War I, and that he's maybe got some unfinished business with Boris Karloff. And uh, you do come to find out that Karloff led some kind of massacre or something and then built this beautiful modern house right on top of where this, this deed took place. You also find out that Boris Karloff's character like 
stole Bela Lugosi's wife or something. I don't know. It's kind of confusing. Uh, I, I, just coming right out and saying it, this movie's not scary. It's not scary at all. Uh, maybe in the 30s, if you had some satanic panic going on, then yeah, you would be a little afraid when you see that Boris Karloff is reading Latin out of the Book of Lucifer and that we're sacrificing women or something. It, so there's like thematically some scary things happening, but there's no jump scares. There's not even really that gruesome of imagery. Um, there is like a, a skinned alive portion towards the end that is shot in a really cool way, like kind of through shadow. Uh, so you don't have to see any of the grisly cutting, uh, but just knowing that it's happening is, is kind of uh, warped <laughs> and, and scary. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's really, I don't, I don't have a ton to say about this movie other than I do appreciate the universal horror classics, and so I'm, I'm happy to have scratched another one off the list. Uh, it's also really fun to see, I just, I just haven't really been exposed to this very much, but seeing Bela Lugosi not as Dracula, and not as Martin Landau and Ed Wood, uh, and seeing Boris Karloff not as Frankenstein, because I love him in Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein, so it was really fun to see him kind of be this satanic worshiping weirdo uh, with floating women in glass cases to preserve their beauty. Not sure how he was doing that, but uh, it was really cool. And uh, so, I mean, you know, it's so short, it's on brand for the season. I think if you're having like a Halloween party or something, these movies are so fun to just have on in the background with the sound off and then play, you know, your Halloween playlist, have Thriller on and Dead Man's Party by Oingo Boingo. You could, you could do whatever you want, but these are such fun things to have on just in the background. They put, it's such an easy way to have uh, more Halloween decorations. So yeah, that's that. Uh, we are doing something kind of fun for our next pick. So if you are not already, go ahead and follow Filmstruck Film Club because we're going to be watching a brand new movie. That's right. I'll let you know about it tomorrow. Uh, but look forward to that. It's going to be our last like October spooky season pick before we just go back to watching classic and international films. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed The Black Cat. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with Groot and E.T. in disguise and me. And uh, I hope to see you very soon.